to live in a world where Pinterest is a reality. Just one repin, and in an instant, my life will be artsy. I want glitter and crafts to get married at least eight times. I want shoes, pretty food, and to cover myself in hair dye. I want lipstick and cinnamon cocoa. Hello, class. Those were a collection of Pinterest fails that I wanted to try to lighten the mood a little bit and talk about reverse engineering gone wrong. When you try to make an undo, when you try to take something as a finished product and go backwards to the original, uh, it doesn't always work out the way you would wish. So the idea of taking a beautiful picture that you see on Pinterest, and they maybe even they give you the recipe, and then trying it yourself might not go so well. And it turns out the same thing is true with sine, cosine, and tangent. If you try to make the undo, the arc sine, the arc cosine, and the arc tangent, it's not going to be the same as the original. If you look at a graph here of a sine wave, you can see it's definitely going to fail the horizontal line test. It's not something that's going to be invertible. So how can we make inverse sine. How can we make something that is the undo of sine? Well, we can limit our scope. We can say we're only going to do part of the domain. So it's not invertible, but we can make it by limiting ourselves here. So is this a good chunk? Is this a good limited slice of the domain that will enable us to flip it on its side? No, it's not, because again, we're still failing that horizontal line test. We're still going to have multiple y's per x if we try to flip it over. So if we instead move it to right there, then that will be a good slice. Now you can see we've covered all of our y's. Every single y value is covered. and in such a way that we are one to one, that every x has a unique y and vice versa. So this is going to have to be the slice of the sine wave that we can invert. So we're taking that slice, inverting it, flipping x for y, say hello to the gorgeous arc sine function. Why hello there? So you can see that whereas our y values for sine go from 1 to negative 1, now when we flip it over, we get x values that go from negative 1 to 1. And just as we had sort of limited the picture from negative 90 degrees to positive 90 degrees, now we're going to flip it over and our y values are going to go from negative 90 to positive 90. This is arc sine. What about cosine? Should we go for that same slice? Is negative 90 to positive 90 going to be a good chunk of this to grab? No. We need this slice over here. If we want to get all of our possible y values and have no repeats, then we're going to need to grab from 0 to 180. That'll get us the whole spectrum all the way at the top of 1 to the bottom of negative 1. So here is the flip then. Not nearly as cool, not nearly as great as arc sine. Excuse me. There is also arc tangent, but you aren't responsible for that. It does exist. It's a button on your calculator. You've probably looked since I've been talking and seen the sine negative 1. If you press second sine on your calculator, there's arc cosine as well, and of course there's arc tangent, but we're not going to have to, you're not responsible for that graph. So he is, sir, not appearing in this film. But why are these domains limited? How can we think about this and, and, and why would it be obvious? Well, what we've been saying about the unit circle is that sine is sort of represents, broadly speaking, the, uh, the y value of the graph. And cosine 
represents, broadly speaking, the x value, and tangent represents the slope. These are sort of the broad pictures about it. Now, where would you go if you wanted to conveniently and quickly, so definitely we're going to use the first quadrant, but where would you go if you wanted to represent all possible y values? Well, we can get all of our y values that are positive in the first quadrant and all of our y values that are negative in the fourth quadrant. So this span over here, this little stretch, is going to be where we get our answers when we ask the calculator arc sine questions. It's only going to answer us first and fourth. What if I wanted to get all possible values for x? Again, the first quadrant will get you all positive x values, but where is x negative? Let's think about this here for a second. We just said that y's are positive here and y's are negative there. Well, obviously y's are positive here and y's are negative there, but what about x's? Well, everybody's positive in the first quadrant, but, and so, so this, this means that x's are, uh, are positive over there. So it can't be first and fourth. That would still only cover the positive x's. But over here on the left side of a graph, then the x values are negative. So our cosine is going to go first and second. Kind of a, a strange uh, twist there. Now, what about arc tangent. Again, you don't need to know the graph of it, but it is going to give you different kind of answers. Let's think about the slope. The slope is definitely positive, you know, like slope of 1, slope of 2, slope of half. Those are all positive. And if I just extend those lines, then that same slope of 1 goes back there, and slope of 2, and slope of half. That slope is positive down there. So negative slope I'll put it in a different color. Negative slope, like here's a slope of negative 1 and negative 2 and negative half. So slope is going to be negative in the second and fourth. So the convenient way to be able to grab two con connected slices that will get us all possible slopes, positive and negative, is again to just grab first and fourth. So. That means arc sine only answers first and fourth, arc tangent only answers first and fourth, but arc cosine answers first and second. Now, you might be thinking, when would you ever use arc tangent, arc sine, arc cosine? Well, a couple summers ago, my dad asked me over and said, hey, I don't know if this tree is going to fall and hit my house or not. And we didn't have any tools uh, pretty much at all. He had a tape measure, and that was it. And I wasn't about to climb this flimsy old tree and see if it was going to fall on his house or not. So what I did was I got a protractor, and I tied a string to the middle of it and put a rock at the end of that string, and then I had a, uh, all the angles there on the protractor. So then I looked at the tip of it up to the top of the tree and the string dangled down and told me the angle that it was to the top of the tree and with the tape measure we could see how far away I was from the tree at that point. So what we've got now is in this story is we've got a tree that we wish we knew the height of that we know uh, how far away we are we don't know the hypotenuse, there's no zip line to the top of the tree, but we do know this angle. So if, if we're looking in here from the perspective of this angle, we wish we knew opposite and we do know the adjacent. So in this example, the problem, it is 71 feet and this one is 31.8 degrees. So what trig function, SOHCAHTOA, involves knowledge of opposite and adjacent? Well, it's tangent. So what we're, what we're going to say is that tangent of this angle of 31.8 equals opposite over adjacent. Now, how can we uh, determine how tall this tree is? 
Well, all we have to do is take tangent 31.8 and multiply by 71. So multiply both sides by 71, that cancels, and you can find the height of the tree. And it turns out this tree actually was, a different real life tree, actually was gonna fall on my dad's house. So I had to get out the chainsaw and chop it down myself like a madman. And it uh, had to make it fall the other way. Crazy story for another time. See you in class.